Hi there, it's Jeff here with a video on the rental housing market. Now, new data is showing that the cost of renting a property uh, in the UK continues to climb very quickly indeed. Around 35% of the population are tenants. They live either in the private rented sector, including renting properties from buy to let landlords, or in the social sector, including housing associations and local councils providing rented property. Now, the latest data shows that the average rent in England climbed to £1,375 uh, up to the uh, end of January 2025. £780 in Wales, just under £1,000 in Scotland. That's the average figure last month. Rents are highest in London, as you would expect, £2,227, the lowest in the North East at £710 per calendar month. Now, the highest rent... By locality, it was Kensington and Chelsea, no, no surprise there, £3,615. The lowest was in Dumfries and Galloway in Scotland, just over £510. So the average rent in the UK in January 2025 was more than seven times higher in the most expensive local area than in the least expensive. Here's a chart showing the average private, private rent in England over the last 10 years, from January 2015 to January 25, and you can see the surge in rented rental prices, particularly in the last two or three years. It's happened in all regions, but the gap between London and the rest of the country gets even wider. And the ONS published some granular detail, but you can actually choose an area, choose a location to see what the, the rental price is for your property. And you can see uh, on the map there, the as you get closer to London, the average price keeps going up. The, the, the depth of the colour gets bluer and bluer as we move away. So what's, what's causing this? Why, why is rented property so persistently expensive and getting, getting even more expensive as month on month? Well, it's obvious. Demand is racing ahead of supply. There's a, a severe lack of affordable rental properties, particularly in major towns and cities. Uh, so new housing developments, including uh, build to let, have not kept pace with demand. And of course, there's the usual problems in the housing market generally of planning restrictions and delays in construction. So there's an inelastic supply. Uh, housing Houses to rent are growing, but they're not growing fast enough to meet demand. And yet demand continues to rise. So we know that the cost of home ownership, uh, high mortgage rates, expensive deposits has pushed more and more people into renting for longer. The average age of a first time buyer, I think, in the UK is close to 35 uh, at the moment. Increased population growth. And of course, uh, high levels of net migration, which in the UK reached, was it 1.2 million people coming in in 2024? Net migration in the high 600,000s or so have added pressure to the rental market because most migrant workers coming to the UK rent properties. And of course, a lot of young professionals and families are staying in rented accommodation because they simply cannot afford to buy, get their foot on the housing ladder. And of course, there's another issue, and that's the cost of being a landlord. So landlords uh, with buy to let mortgages have faced increasing interest rates. Uh, and also that's caused them to increase rents to cover that. And quite a few landlords have exited the market due to the increased cost of a mortgage and the costs of uh, maintaining property and paying those energy bills. So effectively, we're seeing a contraction in rental supply relative to demand. And of course, that means that the average rent goes up. So what's Labour's plans to make renting more affordable? Well, they are trying to uh, make a dent in the issue of the Renters' Rights Bill. I think it entered Parliament in September of 24. It proposes ending Section 21 evictions, uh, ending um, no-fault evictions, preventing landlords from evicting tenants without a valid reason in a bid to give greater security. And uh, regulating rent increases, landlords will be required to provide at least two months' notice before increasing rent at the end of a contract. Of course, the, other, the wider issue, the bigger picture, is the UK government is trying to increase the supply of new housing, both to buy and to rent. And the aim is fairly simple. The government aims, plans, targets the construction of 1.5 million new homes over the lifetime of this parliament, which we assume is five years. Uh, focusing in particular on increasing the availability of affordable housing to buy and to rent. Now, I've done the maths, OK? Uh, 1.5 million divided by five is 300,000 new homes completed each year. We'll come back to that in a second. But keep that figure in mind. 300,000 new homes in each of the next five years. 
allied to this is the proposal for up to 12 new towns. Take a look at this up. This is the number of homes completed in the UK since 1949. Uh, blue is private enterprise. Uh, the black area is housing associations, including things like sheltered housing. And the grey area is local authorities. Now, obviously, the 40s, the 50s and 60s, to a lesser extent, the 70s were decades where councillor housing, local authority housing, was a, a major significant supply or source of new housing. The grey area was local authorities building and adding to the stock of social or council housing. But of course, the Thatcher reforms in the 1980s essentially brought an end to that. There's been no new significant building of local authority houses, basically for the last well, 35, 40 years. Private enterprise now dominates, housing associations taking up some of the slack, but clearly the number of new houses completed has been well below what is needed. Now, the government is targeting 300,000 new homes in each year, between now and the end of this parliament. A laudable aim, in my opinion. But the last time over 300,000 new homes were completed, aka finished, in the UK was 1977, and I was there. So in other words, it's a long time ago. So getting up to 300,000 homes, new homes completed each year in five consecutive years is going to be one hell of an achievement if they reach it. Scotland, of course, as uh, you can read up on this, brought in a couple of years back, I think, a, a kind of a cap on house housing rent inflation. They brought in a 3% annual housing rent cap. Uh, so it's not an actual cap on the level of rent, it's a cap on the annual percentage increase and also a moratorium on evictions. Now, it's worth reading up on this if you're interested in rent controls. Uh, it's been mooted in London as well. This policy was eventually lifted on the 1st of April 2024. So why is rental housing so expensive? Because supply is contracting and it's certainly well below the level needed to meet, uh, a sustainable level needed to meet demand. So the cost of renting is a major barrier for hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of people who are looking to move, perhaps for work or to move closer to family and relatives and so on and so forth. The rental housing sector in the UK is a source of multiple market failures and examiners therefore love this as a topic and it's well worth keeping your eyes on as always thanks for joining in stay happy stay positive stay curious and i hope to see you sometime soon